Hello everyone, welcome back to another devlog. Last video, I introduced the new voxel engine that I'm now working on. I talked about how it uses the Vulkan ray tracing API for hardware acceleration and showcased how it supports multiple different volumes. What I didn't mention is how I also plan to support multiple types of data structures for storing voxel data within each volume. Different volumes are best represented by different data types, and I want to give the programmer control over which data structures to use so they can best optimize for their application. So the past month, I implemented three new data structures into my engine, each with their own benefits and trade-offs. Before we start talking about the new and exciting data structures, I want to take a minute to explain the data structure I was using last devlog, a flat 3D texture. This is by far the simplest structure for volumetric data. It's just a 3D texture, with each entry corresponding to a single voxel. This, as you can imagine, is pretty wasteful. Most volumetric data contains large regions of empty or homogeneous space, and the 3D texture stores each and every voxel in these regions. It is dead simple to create, modify, and traverse though, making it great for smaller volumes with a lot of detail. To traverse a 3D texture, I use a DDA algorithm, as described in this paper from John Emanantides and Andrew Wu. The basic premise is this. Create three planes, one for each axis, and align them to the boundaries of the voxel the ray is currently in. Then, perform a ray plane intersection test on each of these, and step the ray along the axis of the closest plane. Then, move the planes to the new voxel and repeat until either the ray hits the voxel or it exits the volume. This algorithm is very simple, but causes the ray to perform a lot of steps when in large volumes, since it must check each and every voxel individually. Here's a visualization of the number of ray steps. The wider a pixel is, the more steps the ray took. As you can see, stepping through even a moderately large volume requires a lot of computation. Clearly, there's room for improvement. The first data structure I implemented this month is known as a brick map, or more directly, as a two-level hierarchical grid. It's based on this paper from an author whose name I'm not going to try to pronounce. A brick map splits the volume into two levels, the brick map and the individual bricks. A brick is just an 8x8x8 8x8 3D texture. These bricks are then referenced in a top-level grid, the brick map. The brick map is a 3D array of indices into an array of bricks with completely empty bricks not being stored in memory. This means that any 8x8x8 completely empty region is not stored at all, saving 512 bytes. To traverse a brick map, we first simply traverse the top level grid using the DDA algorithm as described before, skipping any completely empty region. Once the ray hits a region that has at least some non-empty voxels, we perform the DDA algorithm again on this smaller scale, stopping once we hit something or continuing in the larger grid if we exit. Here's what the same visualization as before looks like on the brick map. You can see that large regions of the volume are skipped by the ray all at once. This saves a lot of computation since the ray makes much fewer steps. It's not perfect though. As you can see, those regions in the corner only have one filled voxel, but the ray still needs to step through the whole brick. Overall though, the brick map is one of the best data structures for voxel ray tracing, since it offers a great compromise between memory consumption, modifiability, and traversal performance. It's actually the data structure I used for my previous engine. The next data structure is a pretty significant increase in complexity, but is very useful and commonly used in voxel ray tracing. That is, an octree. An octree is in a way a generalization of a brick map, a variable level hierarchy. An octree, or a quadtree in two dimensions, recursively splits the volume into eight octants. If an octant is completely homogeneous, that is, contains only one type of voxel, then it is not split. This means that entire octants of voxels can be represented with only a handful of bytes, leading to massive memory savings. The way I represent this structure in memory is fairly complicated and based off of this paper from NVIDIA. So if you want more information, I'd recommend giving it a read. The ray traversal for an octree is considerably more complex than the last two data structures. We can't use a simple DDA algorithm, since that would mean stepping through each voxel individually. 
We want to exploit the sparse nature of the octree structure to allow the ray to jump over large regions of space at once. The algorithm has three steps at every iteration. First, we descend down the tree until the octant we are in is homogeneous, keeping a stack of all the nodes we visit. If the octant is filled with non-empty voxels, then the ray hits something and we're done. Once we are as low in the tree as possible, the next step is to use a DDA algorithm to move the ray into a neighbor node. The last step happens only if the ray is out of bounds of its parent node after moving to a neighbor. In this case, we ascend back up the tree using the stack until the ray is no longer out of bounds. If we reach the root node and the ray is still out of bounds, then the ray exited the volume and we're done. These steps get repeated at every iteration until one of the aforementioned stopping conditions is met. Here's the result of implementing that algorithm. As you can see, the ray performs considerably fewer steps, since it's able to skip very large regions of the volume at once. The octree is one of the best data structures for volumes with large amounts of empty space. The traversal algorithm is considerably more complicated, however, so for small volumes, the space skipping isn't worth it. The final data structure is a sparse voxel directed acyclic graph, which I'm just going to be calling a DAG. A DAG is a generalization of an octree. It's just an octree where identical regions of space can share the same memory. For example, an octree that looks like this could be reduced to a DAG that looks like this, saving a lot of memory. A DAG is notably more difficult to build though, requiring a hash map to identify identical regions. The traversal algorithm is basically identical to that of an octree and shares the same space skipping properties. It's mostly just a tool to decrease memory usage even further and is the most compact out of the four data structures. Finally, here are all of the new data structures side by side. This is the main goal of my engine, to allow programmers to mix and match different data structures to suit their use case. Each structure has different trade-offs. The first row of numbers is the size in bytes, and the second row is the time taken to build each structure. The flat volume is clearly the most memory demanding, but is extremely simple to build and modify. As we move to the right, the data structures get more complex, saving memory but increasing build time. The octree and DAG also have the disadvantage of not being directly modifiable. They must either be fully or partially rebuilt to represent changes in the volume. I'm also in the process of writing functions to convert between each type of data structure efficiently, so voxel data can be converted from one form to another on the fly, allowing even more versatility for performance. Overall, the changes this month have been a massive success. My new engine already has so much more freedom and potential than my last one did, being restricted to one data structure and one volume. I haven't had the time to make any large scenes for the sake of profiling, but I'm confident that this multiple data structures approach will prove very performant when used correctly. I know this video was pretty heavy on the technical side, but next month I hope to start working on shading, so I should have some prettier scenes to show off. That's it for now though. Thanks for following the project so far.